Yeah. We're probably not going to be really seeing Mary. She is showing up at some point because she's Molly Ringwald. Oh, yeah. Oh my god! Fucking redheads all over yes! the place. Yes! Every redhead that we can find in Hollywood is going to show up. Get Seth Green to show up. He's going to be the weird uncle of the Blossoms. Sugar. Oh, honey, honey. Hi, welcome to Tanner's Books and Beyond. This is my friend Lindsay. Hi. And this is episode two of our Riverdale recaps. So the episode starts with Archie having what's probably going to be his weekly shirtless angst. Yeah, tossing and turning in bed and nothing but his underwear. Nothing but his underwear. Leaving very little to the imagination. <laughs> <laughs> We're watching this show for the plot. <laughs> So he like texts Betty. He's like, are you up? I need to talk. And she's like, no. And of course they live like next door to each other. So he's like, goes to the window and it's like, I see that you're up. Can we talk? And she's like, no. Turns off light. It was like a reverse Taylor Swift. <laughs> so he's like, uh, you know, I, I should go for a shirtless run in the middle of the night. And of course, where does he go? But Miss Grundy's house. Because, oh, fuck. That's concerning because it indicates that he knows where she lives and he probably went to her house over the summer. To do the do. Yeah. They're, like, talking to each other. He's confronting her. Like, we have to tell them what happened because, like, we know stuff. But she's like, we'll get into trouble. It's like, well, duh, you'll get into trouble, but you're not going to be, like, charged for accessory to murder or whatever. Yeah, well, she keeps acting like they're both going to get into trouble. And it's like, no, no. just you because they're going to know you're shopping a kid half your age. So then the next morning... There's a memorial and stuff. Jughead is trying to extract some truth from Archie, trying to figure out what the hell is going on with him. And then there's, like, an announcement from Principal Weatherby, the sheriff, who is also Kevin's dad. Well, in the in the comics, he was in the military. Okay. And apparently also he was, like, super chill with Kevin being gay. Okay. And I think they're indicating that that may not be the case mm. here. But then again, like, he and Moose found the body, so... Yeah. That's probably more like, okay, what were you doing out there? Oh, you're doing that? Um, are you okay? With Kevin... Kevin and Moose, it feels like the fact that Moose is bi, like, I, I think they were pretty, I wish they would have actually said the words yeah. bisexual, but they were pretty indicative that he is not full gay. He yeah. Is, he's pretty bi. He's pretty... In the middle. Yeah. And, but it's weird because they kind of treat it just like an open secret. But then again, it's a small town, so hardly anything can stay secret for a long yeah, time. Yeah, that's true. Oh, and then when they're doing the announcement. Oh, because she, Cheryl is there. Because Cheryl will force herself into any Everything. situation that's tangentially connected to her. She's like, we will find the murderer of my brother and he will die. Hashtag Riverdale strong. <laughs> Fucking hell. And then, and then there's a brief pause as the sheriff and Weatherby just kind of give her a look. At least they're acknowledging in the universe that her behavior is not normal. She is kind of crazy. And then it goes to the science class where she's like being confronted by her friends. I think one of them's Tina Patel. She's being confronted by her minions. Yeah. And they're like, so Cheryl, we heard that Jason got shot even though you said he drowned. We're pretty sure that means you killed him. And Cheryl's like, shut up. I totally am not a killer. Stabs a frog. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Archie's trying to talk to her and has this increasingly frightened look on his face. Yeah. Like, shit, shit, shit. And in the battle class, also a continuation of the whirlwind Betty Veronica romance. Yeah. Veronica is the new Bratana. I'm so, 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 so sorry what I did to you. I didn't mean it. Like, here's, like, a dozen roses and, like, cupcakes I got from New York. And I got, like, the certificate for a pedicure. Please be my friend. And then she, then she forces herself to be Betty's bio partner. <laughs> She's like, it's destiny that we're together. Veronica, your sapphism is showing. It's obvious that you like her more than as a friend. Yeah, holy shit. Yeah, the lunch scene. So Archie is, of course, doing his white man with guitar thing. He's evolved into a sort of proto Sean Mendez. So yeah, he's like trying out this new song and it just so happens to trigger Betty to... The back to school dance. Yeah, the back to school dance. She gets super emotional about it because, you know, she's... The high strung. She is more wound up tight than cables on a bridge or whatever. Yeah, it's like everyone's already kind of on edge because they're teenagers. And then there's been a death in town, so that's even worse. That turns out to be a murder. And Betty is straight up, she is stuck with a very abusive mother, emotionally abusive mother. Yeah. 
Her I first lines in the show were basically, this Jason scandal is going to be delicious. Also, Betty, all of your friends will betray you. Her mom is like Joan Crawford and Mommy Dearest <laughs> to a certain degree. Like, there's a definite, like, all about her. Like, this is about my reputation, not about your reputation. I am loving vicariously through you. But yeah, so Betty basically gets triggered and she's like, I tried to be friends with you, Archie, but I can't. It's just too much and too raw. And then that leads into a scene where she kind of does the same thing with Veronica. They're at cheerleading practice and Veronica's still like, hey, hey. hey are you okay? And Veronica is very much trying to get Betty to go after Archie. Like that talk. And Cheryl, Cheryl has a shirt that has HBIC on it. <sighs> no, fuck, I want that shirt. <laughs> of course you want that shirt at the same time. Like, how many red flags can there be that this girl is fucking psychotic? Did we mention that she also wears a red widow pin? Yes! Oh like, my God. she's not doing herself any favors. No. There's like a flashback when they're at Pops. Like, her and Jason are at Pops. <laughs> and they're sharing... <laughs> <laughs> they're sharing a milkshake. Cheryl, of course, inserts herself and Betty is like, I want to hurt Veronica in some fashion. So, you know, hey, Cheryl, let's... Hang out together. Cheryl and Betty, they have like a makeover time in Betty's room. And Cheryl practically straddles Betty. Yeah. While doing her makeup. Cheryl is like, I know that your crazy ass sister Polly killed my brother Jason, who is a saint. And and Betty, like props to Betty, she's like, she rises into frame <laughs> like a fucking demon. <laughs> and gets right in Cheryl's face and is like, get out of my house or I will kill you. <laughs> right after that scene, it cuts to Archie and Jughead arguing in front of Archie's house. Because Jug finds out about everything with Miss Grundy. Yeah. And Jug's like, M Grundy is fucking creepy and manipulative. And if you're not seeing that, then I'm super concerned. In that scene, at that moment, I'm like, I was waiting for her <laughs> to shatter ginger corpse to come flying out the window. <laughs> Like it's a Monty Python. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in there, we also got a scene where Veronica and Archie are taking a walk down the street. Archie basically exposits about like how he and Betty have known each other since they were four. So I'm guessing like Archie's feelings are more like you're my sister. There's yeah. there's clearly some romance in yeah, there. He but just... it's just mixed up in the whole like we've known each other since we were really little. There's a scene in the students' lounge. Reg is being a dick. Makes fun of Moose because everyone Dang. pretty much knows that Moose likes dick. Yeah. He makes fun of Jughead for being none more goth and he suggests that... Archie was in on it? Archie and Reggie beat the shit out of each other. Archie gets a nice shiner. And then it cuts to... Archie and his dad have a heart-to-heart -heart where Archie vag blogs about... Grundy. He's, yeah, basically. he's like, there's this girl who doesn't want me to do the right thing because it could hurt us. But I want to do the right thing. And his dad's basically like, follow your heart, son. I yeah, believe in you. Yeah, he basically gives, like, the whole Dumbledore, like, doing the right thing is a hard thing, but it's worth it. Yeah. And so then we get the pep rally. The decent amount of stuff goes on in the pep rally. We get Archie confronting Grundy, and he says that he is going to go to Weatherby and Sheriff Keller and say that he's going to tell them about the gunshot they heard. And he will try and protect her, but she should, he's like... He's you telling her to step. Then he... Then he makes like, up with Jughead. Yeah. Those right. who pussycats before him, they do an updated version of Sugar Sugar, which is fucking, pardon my millennial, but it's fucking lit. Yeah. And the, they don't change any of the pronouns. Which so at you. least at least one sh of the pussycats is it, into girls. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if Melanie and Valerie are dating. And then they have like the football team run out as you do at a pep rally. Yeah. So I don't know if we said this earlier, but um, Archie is wearing Jason's number. Right, yeah. Yeah, an important side note. Uh, most normal schools, if someone on a team died, they would retire that number. As my brother Ryan mm -hmm. pointed out, like that's the normal thing to do. Mm -hmm. Riverdale's not normal, so they give it to Archie, the only other redhead on the team. So as they're running out, Cheryl... She gets she, triggered, basically. Yeah, she basically She has her triggered. one human moment. Yeah. She sees Archie as Jason and immediately runs off because, you know, emotions. She hasn't felt anything for the past three months. Betty and Veronica chase after her and Veronica actually comforts her. It was actually a pretty sweet moment. Mm -hmm. and, like, just like this genuine, very human moment. Like, don't get me wrong. Cheryl's gonna have to do more work for me to be convinced that I can actually like her. Yeah, she's still... She's a fun character because she's terrifying. Yeah, but, but... as a person. That happens, and then Betty is like, you know, not a lot of girls would actually do that. 
Probably because everybody is terrified of Cheryl. Betty and Veronica, they make up. They, de they decide to go to Pops to get some milkshakes. Tragically, they don't share a milkshake. And they make a vow to never let a boy become between them again. Archie and Jughead walk in and they just, you know, hang out that evening. They have actual nice children moment. Yeah. Let's be 15 year olds who are enjoying life. Because as the voiceover, as Jughead's voiceover says, like somebody's going to get arrested and it's Cheryl. Yeah. Because, well, she's kind of the obvious suspect. Yeah. Like like I said, she did herself no favors. Yeah. The, the Weatherby and the sheriff like walk into the class classroom and Cheryl immediately stands up and she like holds her wrists out and it's like I'm guilty probably very misleading then at the end we find out that Jason died a week after we initially thought like that's the real how to get away with murder moment yeah last week was just set up this is the real like oh now we're in the deep shit so what'd you think was this a good episode yeah yeah oh, uh, out of five milkshakes how many do you give it I'll give it a four yeah I'd yeah. say the same it it keeps the momentum going, gives good plot and character development. Sets up a lot of really mm -hmm. interesting stuff. I'm uh, excited to see next week. Because, yeah, next week I'm pretty sure it's Ethel. Yeah. <gasps> Barb lives! Woo! <laughs> so I guess All right. That's... I guess that's everything. Yeah. That's what happened in a little town called Riverdale. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to talk about the blossoms in the attic. <laughs>